This is a lock. It's a clever feat of engineering which allows boats to navigate along waterways where there's a change in altitude. There are two gates at the top of the lock and two at the bottom, and each one of these gates has a sluice which allows water through when the gate is closed. These sluices are operated by a special kind of key called a windlass. Andrea is using one right here. When heading downstream, ensure that the sluices on the bottom gate are closed and then open the sluices on the top. You can tell a sluice is closed when the paddle is not visible, and here you can see the paddle rising as Andrea opens up the sluice gate. When the top sluices are open, the lock chamber will then fill up with water. The aim is to get the water in the lock to the same level as the water outside the lock, and when that happens, you're able to open up the gates and then you can water bike into the lock. Okay, buddy, in you come. When you enter the lock, head straight towards the middle of the chamber. Close to the top gates, you'll see a white marker with the word sill on it. The sill is a concrete lip jutting out from the top gate, so just be sure to be beyond that white mark, otherwise the water bike will be caught on the sill when the water empties out of the lock. Once in the lock, close the top gates. The gates can be quite heavy, but there are usually handy grips for your feet to help the process. Now make sure you close the sluices on the top gates, and be mindful that there's a latch on the sluice paddle which naturally wants to close. Be careful here, always keep hold of the windlass and then carefully lift the catch off the sluice paddle and manually control the windlass as the weight of the sluice paddle brings the paddle down. Make sure you don't let go of the windlass or the latch and all will be well. Okay. When the top sluices are closed, open up the sluices on the bottom gates. This will allow water to leave the chamber and when the water inside the lock is the same as outside the bottom of the lock, the gates will open and you can leave safely. If you're in doubt over the water level, just try to open the lock gates. If you can't, there's still too much water pressure above, so just be patient and soon the gates will be ready to open. Don't forget to shut the gates behind you when you leave a lock, unless there's another boat approaching, in which case you can leave them open. If you're alone, you'll have to then moor up below the lock and then head back up and shut them yourself. All this is naturally a lot easier to do when you've got friends to help you. Gentle water biking is much the same as walking pace, so feel free to invite friends and family. If you're water biking alone, you can still easily operate a lock. It'll just take a bit more time. Head into the centre of the lock and then take care to climb the ladder. There's a good chance it'll be slippy because it's often underwater, so please be careful here. When you leave the bike, make sure you take a mooring line with you. There's one other side of the pontoons. The water in the lock is going to move up and down, so make sure there's slack and tie up the very end of the mooring line around a bollard. This is important. Don't pull the rope tight because as, as the water empties out, the water bike needs to be able to descend with it. Then open up the sluices on the bottom gates and then immediately head back to the water bike line, untie it and hold on until the water level has settled to the level outside the lock. Once the water in the chamber is all the way down, you can open the bottom gates and then it's time to climb down to the water bike. Keep the line with you and again, be careful. The ladder will be slippy, so just take your time and get back on board the water bike safely. And then you're ready to go. Pedal merrily out of the lock and don't forget to moor up below and head back to close up the gates before you continue down the canal. And that, my friend, is how to go downstream through a lock.